Hello everybody, it's Girl Next Door AC and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna try out a different game called Our Life New Beginnings and Always. Oh, Our Life Beginnings and Always. Um, it's a game that's free to play on Steam right now, so you know, I wanted to see what's so nice about it. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I didn't search anything about this game, I just saw it, it was up, and I like the tags that it had, so now I'm gonna give it a shot. Welcome to our life. There are various ways you can customize and interact with the game. This tutorial is an overview of how certain features work. The game is divided into three periods called steps. Step 1, childhood. 2, adolescence. 3, teenage. You determine nearly everything about the main character. Name, appearance, personality, pronouns, interest, skills, the relationships with major characters, and so on. have a nice time with our life and thank you for playing so i'm only gonna put like bits and cuts of the intro there because the intro took me like seven minutes so yeah i'm also gonna do my character first a few moments later this is my character i'm gonna make her a she because well i'm a she and you know i usually have brown hair but you know i colored my hair under the light, under the sun and like, you know, strong light, my hair is brown, my eyes are brown. But yeah, putting she, this is what my character looks like. Part of the bangs, just like me. Okay, so this is what my character finally looks like. Um, I gave her a scar there because I have a scar up here. I don't know if you guys can see it. I have a scar up there. Glasses, because I have glasses. I don't have freckles, but I think I find them really cute. So, yeah. I'm gonna make her Jamie Edwards and these are the stuff because I do have a birthmark in my arm You know and stuff. So yeah voice name page done Summer and sunset bird was a special time of year your usually sleepy town began to bustle It was popular tourist destination with people coming from all over the From coming all over to enjoy the beach the weather and the relaxation that came with both the smell of the ocean the smell of the ocean crisp and salty, hung in the air, bringing three whole months of school as vacation with it. During the summer, your moms didn't like you to wander too far outside your neighborhood, so you knew the area pretty well. That included the people. Families came and went from sunset bird, but they mostly stayed and did what your mom called putting down roots. They built businesses, they got to know each other, and they definitely said hello to the nice young kids who waved when passing their stories. Stores. Going for a walk around the town mostly meant that the familiar friendly residents waved or asked how your family was or most often just said hello. You didn't really get why they always had to say hi, so every day they were saying hi to us. You didn't really get why they always had to say hi. They saw you every day but you nodded back at them. It was the polite thing to do after all and your moms had taught you to always be respectful just like my mom but today there was a man sitting on the curb outside your house he was sitting with his he head in hands and his whole body slumped over and you wondered if he was even a real person or a statue that hasn't magically sprung up from the ground overnight whoever or whatever he was you had never seen him before one thing you one thing about knowing everybody in Every uh, one thing about knowing everyone in Sunset Bird was that people who you didn't recognize really, really stood out. It was rare for tourists to venture into the residential district, as your moms called it. So for you, not knowing who a total stranger was a set of a lot of red flags. Your moms had a talk with you and your big sister Lizzie about this kind of situation before. They mentioned that some people aren't good to talk to, but other types of people can help you even if you don't know them. You weren't sure about this man yet. Still you felt a bit scared, you are pretty interested, you want to know whether he was nice or not, you don't want to be bothered. Still you felt a bit scared knowing that he was blocking the way to your front door. I'm answering this the way I would do it, like in real life, actually. You slowed down, your mind racing for ideas on how to get past him unseen, but it was too late to escape. 
There was a split second where your eyes met and you took in a shakily breath, your eyes darting to the sky, pretending to stare at a bird who was hovering nearby. Hey! His voice startled you and made you jump, but still you didn't look at him. The bird landed on top of a nearly gate po The bird landed on top of a nearby gate post and its black feathers ruffled against the gentle breeze. Trying to keep your eyes on it was tough, especially when the man stood up and started his ma making his way towards you. Uh... Still unsure about him, but willing to be friendly, you offered the stranger a smile. The man gives a grin of his own ma the man gives a grin of his own back. Do you live around here? What's your name? You looked up at the man and down. You looked the little You looked the man up and down, taking in his tan skin and relaxed appearance. At least his clothes were relaxed. The way he was acting wasn't. He had sharks on his shorts and stingray tattoos, and he wondered if he was obsessed with the ocean or something. While you made your assessment, he looked at you expectantly, waiting for an answer to his question. Yeah, I live here. That's great! He looked happy to hear it, giving you a broad smile. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a clean $20 bill. It crinkled in his hand. It crinkled in his hand as he held it up to you. Even more confused than before, you looked back at him. Well. Oh, did you guys hear that? Well, could you do me a favor? Nothing bad. Sorry, I should have. Let me start over. He cleared his throat <coughs> and stood up straighter. From where you were standing, it honestly just made him look creepier. Mm. I have a son. His name is Cove, who is about your age. You thought that was pretty cool. I think it's a pretty cool name. You've never met anyone with that name. We moved in across the street, you see. He gestured towards the house that had been empty for a year, his watch catching the late afternoon sunlight and reflecting off the walls. The gigantic for sale sign was finally gone. You must be Jamie Edwards, right? I met your moms earlier and they told me you were eight, just like him. So... He shook the $20 bill to bring it back to your attention, a hopeful smile tilting, tilting his lips at the corners. Can you try to be friends with the boy? Just give it a chance and you can keep this. He's a good kid. You'll like him. But I know that he's trying to speak but I can barely hear him. But you've got to keep it a secret too, okay? It wouldn't be friendly to say his dad sent you. You eyed the man. What could be so bad about this cove kid that his dad would need a bribe? What could be so bad about this cove kid that his dad would need to bribe strangers to be friends with him? What do you say? Make a deal? You didn't want the money. No, thank you. Sorry. He deflated enough to notice, but not completely. Are you sure? Are you sure? It won't be so bad. Even if it's just for the summer, that'd be enough. That only made this sound more strange to you. What is, why does it lasting for the summer matter? When it was clear his intent, initial, when it was clear his initial strategy wasn't going to fly, he tucked the bill into the back pocket and changed the request. I get it, you don't have to. Would you be more comfortable with he, he and I coming by for a normal visit? No money involved. You'd have to ask my moms. His smile got bigger again, his eyes crinkled at the side. Of course, they invited us over earlier, but I'd like to ask you too. The bitch, why'd you ask me? You're not giving me a choice here. Then I guess you can. I'll bring him by tomorrow. I wanted him to meet and greet with the neighbors today, but... Well, I don't know where he's gotten off to. He laughed when he said that, but with the way his face looked, you thought he actually wanted to cry. If you see him, could you tell him to come on home? He's got a pink cast and glasses. You can't miss it. Sure thing. This definitely wasn't the normal way kids made friends. You knew that, but you were still going to help. The man smiled and reached out to pat your head. Paused before doing so, then pulled his hand away instead. Your moms are already checking around for me. Such a thoughtful group you are. Now I better go too. Can't put everyone else to work while I keep sitting here. 
I thought he might come back and that's not what's important. I have to go. Thanks, Jamie. So, thanks again, Jamie, so much. <laughs> that's an awkward sentence structure. He jogged off down the street without another word. You decided to check the hills behind your house. Let's find Cove. Let's find Cove. Step one, first sight. The chirping of the crickets in the tall grass greeted you, quiet and familiar. From the top of the hill, you could see the ocean. As you walked, you listened to the crash of the waves on the shore and the seagulls squawking as they settled down for the night. You always loved the ocean. It was so much fun. Sometimes Lizzie would join you, the two of you splashing each other in the waves. Those were the best days. You took in a deep breath. <sighs> you tried to relax and couldn't. You weren't sure what, but something told you that you weren't alone. So you glanced around. There was a boy sitting on the top hill. Oh, almost completely hidden within long grass and white flowers surrounding him. His head was buried in his knees, staring ahead by himself. For whatever reason, probably just that he wasn't paying attention. He hadn't noticed you yet. You watched him a minute longer, feeling a little bit like you'd found a, de a deer in the wild. Those de though deers didn't have casts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pink casts. But this boy did. You wondered how he got it. After a few more seconds, you took a step forward, and then another, and then he glanced your way. His aquamarine eyes reflected the light of the moon. You stopped raising a hand to acknowledge him and show you weren't scary. Hey, space cadet. With a start, he jumped to his feet, his hands balling into a fist at his side. He didn't say anything, just stared at you in a strange way. He'd been crying. There were traces of tears on his cheek and his knees soaking the hem of his shorts and his eyes were still shining with a few more. You'd obviously caught him off guard. His pink cast seemed to glow in the twilight, though when he caught you staring at it, he hid his arms behind his back. Something the man earlier had said stuck out to you. Cove? Ah, eyes wide. He studied you. Wait, I'm eight years old. That's not supposed to be a voice. Cove? <laughs> How, how'd you know? I met your dad. Oh. Uh, so, is this your hill? He gestured with his uninjured arm to the patch of the grass surrounding you, his face falling at the prospect. I can leave if it is. You shook your head. While doing so, you picked at the strand of lint on your leg. What a weird question to ask someone. Oh. He sat back down with the thump, resting his chin on his knees again. Curious about the strange new boy with the odd dad, you sat in a patch of grass next to him. The pure white flowers that covered the hill rocked back and forth gently as the stars twinkled above. The way they dotted the sky made them seem like flowers too. The night wind was cold as it traveled over the ocean and up the hill, chasing away the heart, the heat from the afternoon. Why are you here? A quiet hiccup escaped Cove as soon as he asked a question. Almost like they'd never stop, his tears, his tears started up again with vengeance. My parents... They don't want to live together with me anymore. The tears fell fast and heavy over his flushed cheek, sticking in his dark lashes. My mom made my dad leave and he took me with him. And now we have a house here and I want to go home. The outburst took you off guard. By the time he was done wailing, Cove's chest was leaving, heaving with exhaustion. He sniffled and removed his glasses, wiping at his eyes with the back of his hand before he put them back on again. I hate this place. I want my real life back. I want my mom. I'm sorry. Your dad seems kind of nice. You like it here. You just have to get used to it. Stop crying. Uh... Your dad seems kinda nice. He slipped his hand underneath his glasses and pressed his finger against his eyelids. Cove wound wound himself up again for another long crying fit. It must be hard for Cove living here without his mom, but at least he still had a parent who cared about him. But from way off in the distance, you heard your parents. Jamie! Cove? Well, you heard that. Kids, where'd you go? Cove looked at you. 
tears still clinging to his cheeks. Don't tell them we're here. I don't want to go home. I don't want to go back to that house. I want to go home. You have to go, don't worry so much. Sorry, I have to. It will be okay. It'll be okay. You were struck by sudden need to reassure Cove. It's... It's not gonna be all fun, but... Isn't he your family too? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Then you can count on him when you really, really need it. You shot him with a grin. And pushed yourself to your feet. Slowly, Cove stood up with you, still looking a little reluctant. His dad voice rang out again. Cove, can you hear me? He looked towards the sound of his dad's voice, silent, and turned away while rubbing his not bandaged arm. Sorry, Sorry I still don't want to go. You waited silently with him. Yeah, I get it. You do? Before you could answer, you heard Cove's dad, even closer than before. There you are, bud! I'm gonna stop here because uh, time just ran out for me. But I will continue this immediately and, you know, post the episode right after. So, these will be two consecutive episodes just so that it won't end so much in a cliffhanger. So, yeah. If you like this video, please hit that like button. It'll really help me out a lot. And feel free to, you know, subscribe to my channel or turn on that notification bell bar. I forgot which one it is to see you know the next episode of this and yeah I really do appreciate you guys and I am liking the story it's actually really interesting and deep but yeah I really appreciate appreciate you guys for watching this and I'll see you guys in the next video bye